Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for being here once again. Thank you for joining uh, this video. I hope that you would like to watch some of the process of this painting. This is a bigger painting. It is 22 by 36. I've had this idea for, for several months um, earlier this year and up until this point I just didn't have nothing solid so it just took me a little bit to narrow down what I wanted to paint and how I wanted to paint it so hopefully that this inspires you as well and maybe it also inspires you to paint bigger but regardless I hope that you enjoy the video and the process of course. So this is the mood board that I've been doing for the next painting. For some reason I was obsessed with this painting by John William Waterhouse and I love the idea of the hamadryad. In Greek mythology, a dryad, also called a hamadryad, a nymph or nature spirit who lives in the trees and takes the form of a beautiful young woman. Dryads were originally the spirits of oak trees, but the name was later applied to all the tree nymphs. It was believed that they lived as long as the trees they inhabited. It's a little sad, <laughs> it's a little sad to the dryads, but I just think it's so beautiful and there's something purely magical. And I did a little study of the Hamad dryad as well. Then I added more, of course, more inspiration. Um, I have here my wonderful muse with Jess and this is me planning my painting. I bought some stretch bars, um, 22 by 36. It has a similar shape also as the sketch. The sketch was 8 by 16. If I may, let me show you two amazing books that I would love to recommend to you in this video. The first one is called Fairies. It is by Alan Lee and Brian Frowes. I hope I'm saying it correctly. I first came across Alan Lee's work when he was working with John Howe in the trilogy of Lord of the Rings. Um, and if you know this, well, you probably know, I just adore his work and John House as well. But this book was just amazing because it showed all of the fairies, the different creatures in the different kingdom. It's just a gem. And interestingly enough, when I found the this next one, it is called Fairies of the Fault Lines. It is by Iris Compiet. As you open this book, there is a letter by Brian Froud and also Alan Lee, just pretty much saying how amazing her work is, which is absolutely true because it is just gorgeous. They are amazing watercolors and uh, beautiful creatures, the mandrake, the mermaid, and explaining the story. It's just so beautiful. Now diving a little bit into the Hamadryad story and backstory, technically at first there was a distinction between um, a dryad and a hamadryad. The dryads, they were similar to other tree nymphs and they just simply lived in the forests or around any trees. I almost screwed that up, <laughs> but no worries. The hamadryads, however, were born and lived and died inside the trees, which is very, very sad. And often their parents, they were nature gods, like rivers. This distinction between the dryads and the dryads pretty much faded over time, so now both words are interchangeable. Um, but that was like the difference between one and the other. This reminds me of a story from when I was a little girl in our neighborhood. A lot of the girls we used to play outside together and Maria, <laughs> being the oldest and a little cheeky, while well, she was pointing at the biggest chestnut tree that there was there, which had a big split in the middle, she told us with full confidence, the son of Lord Voldemort lives inside. <laughs> and so I believed for many, many years.
So at this stage, um, I'm painting here the legs and the knees and kind of like those leaves wrapping around her leg. But I want to take a step back and really look at what we have, what I've done and where am I going. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is just refer to my initial mood board. I'm using Milano. If you watch my previous video, you've seen that I use it as well. I also use it for my painting commissions. It just does help me a lot to visualize the entire um, commission. The good thing is that you have hundreds of templates to choose from. This is the one that I kind of created for this specific painting, but you can just drag any type of um, document or image or add little notes on the side. You can also invite your colleagues that you're working with, if it's a maybe university project or personal project, whatever that is. So Milanote is available for free. Um, you can check the link in my description box and feel free to use it. I really think it's an amazing tool. And um, as I said, I've been using it for a lot of projects. I also wanted to show you, this is a painting that I did kind of like in between the stages and it was the, um, it was the initial idea of how I draw it. But as you can see, I, I didn't quite finish it um, or I didn't go with it full on. I kind of wiped the whole thing at some point and starting it all over again. <laughs> and then I didn't end up using it either. But I really think that the process, it's almost, um, the process is so beautiful on its own. It's beautiful, it is frustrating, it is wonderful, it has all of these stages. Sometimes it drives one crazy, obviously. But I think if you enjoy the process truthfully, you've, um, you've succeeded already. The key is to just never stop trying, to never give up. Um, that is the, the success. And I know it's, you know, cliche or, or it's easy to say, you can call it whatever, but it is just the truth. <laughs>